Hello, I'm James Barnhill with Utah State University Extension Service. And today is March the 29th, and we're just outside of Ogden, Utah, in an alfalfa field. When today we want to talk about alfalfa stem nematode, how we uh, recognize the symptoms of alfalfa stem nematode, and some of the ways that we manage the disease. As we look at this field here, you'll notice that it's green on the right hand side and then and it started to grow it's maybe five inches tall whereas on the left hand side it's pretty stunted and many of the plants haven't begun to green up yet when we're looking for the symptoms for the of the alfalfa stem nematode we normally want to be out around the end of March and the first part of April because during this time period the weather's still pretty cool and the plants are growing pretty slow but it's warm enough that those that are not infested start to take off and grow pretty fast while those that are in, being held back by the stem nematode are stunted and short and uh, they look like they're not even growing yet in fact in se severe cases the alfalfa stem nematode will actually kill some of these plants and the life of the stand will be reduced by a year or two sometimes so it can be really a, a severe problem for producers. If you want to, to look for alfalfa stem nematode symptoms, the time of year that you need to be out looking for it when they're visible is in the spring, usually the, the end of March and the first part of April here in the Ogden area. And as you can see down here, the alfalfa is starting to grow, but that alfalfa that's infected with alfalfa stem nematode is being stunted and some of the plants haven't even started to green up yet while those that are not infested are maybe five inches tall. So it gets to be pretty easy to, to look down through the field and you can see where the infestations occur. If you wait three weeks from now when the weather's warm and all of the plants are growing faster, the plants will outgrow the alfalfa stem nematode and it won't be long before you won't be able to see the symptoms any longer. So there's just a about a month, maybe three to four weeks worth of time that you'll be able to see the actual difference in height due to the alfalfa stem nematode damage. We'll pick a stem from a plant that appears not to be infested with stem nematode and then we'll pick a, a stem from one that is infested, just any of these here, and we'll show you the difference. Now, those that are not infested have long inner nodes between the nodes. They're elongated, the stem is elongated. Whereas those that are infected with stem, with alfalfa stem nematode have shortened inner nodes. The nodes tend to be a little swollen and the stem seems to be flattened. It's more flattened than the, the one that's not infected. And so those are the things we look for in the field that would make us think that we have stem nematode. These nematodes are little microscopic worms. They live in the stems of the alfalfa and they can cause severe damage to our alfalfa production in a, in a susceptible variety growing in a severely infested uh, stem nematode field. will have yield reductions of maybe 7 to 12 percent. The stem nematode moves on dirt and in plant material and in water. And as we look at this field here, we can see how it's kind of moved down this field and infested this alfalfa as this field is flood irrigated. And so what might come in is an infestation in some tail water, might start at the top of the field and then move with the irrigation water down through the field. For those fields that are already infested with stem nematodes, we have a few options. The primary option that we use is alfalfa variety resistance. And we have varieties now that are up to 80% resistant to stem nematode. And that really helps a lot if we'll grow a variety that's resistant in those areas where a stem nematode occurs. Um, there are not any registered nematicides, so we don't have any chemicals to treat this with. We have to just use cultural practices. One of the cultural practices that we use is to rotate out of alfalfa to a non-host crop like wheat or corn for a couple of years, and that'll really reduce the number of nematodes in the soil. 
These nematodes are really hardy and uh, they overwinter in the stems of the plants and in the soil and if we have drought periods they can survive those pretty easily. They go into a resting state and can survive until conditions improve for them. Um, if you don't have stem nematodes, it's really important that you implement sanitation practices that will keep the nematodes from coming in. Um, the nematodes can travel on seed, on alfalfa seed, and so it's important that you purchase seed that didn't come from an infested field. Um, it also moves in on equipment and in tailwater off of other fields that are infested. So when if you have an infested field like this, you don't want to be moving your swathers and your tillage equipment out of this field into another clean field without cleaning those, that equipment off first. If you suspect that you have an alfalfa stem nematode problem and you see the symptoms, the way to verify that is to take a sample into the laboratory and look at it under the dissecting microscope where we can see those little microscopic worms. So we'll go around and just randomly collect five to ten stems of, from the alfalfa that appears to be infected. So just So here we are with our sample of alfalfa stems from plants that we suspect are infested with alfalfa stem nematode. And there are very few alfalfa stem nematodes in the leaves, so a lot of times we'll just pull the leaves off. And we're only going to use the bottom section of the stem. And we'll want to cut this stem up into small pieces, and then we'll put them into this bowl of water. And that'll force the nematodes out into the water, and we'll be able to look at them under the dissecting microscope. So on these stems, we'll just cut them into small pieces. And I usually go to about the second node or so, and then that's far enough. And just try to keep the stem tissue, and not the leaf tissue. The leaf tissue just gets in the way in the water when you're trying to look down through the water to see the nematodes. So uh, they don't have to be really small. And if you cut them really, really small, you probably cut a, some of the nematodes in half and you'll see some dead ones in there if, if you have stem nematodes. Some people ask how many stem nematodes they need to find in their sample um, in order to have a stem nematode problem. And the answer is, if you find any stem nematodes in your sample, then you have a stem nematode problem. These uh, female, well, nematodes can lay two to 500 eggs and uh, takes them about a month to go from an egg to a uh, female that can lay eggs. And so even one in a short time can turn into a lot of nematodes and really affect the production of alfalfa. Once we've chopped these stems up, then we just stick them in the water and give them a little time to soak through and for the nematodes to come out of the stems. That'll only take maybe uh, four or five minutes. And then once that occurs, then we'll uh, look at them under the dissecting microscope. So we put, we take the dish that has the water and the alfalfa stems in it and stick it under the dissecting microscope. And I like to swirl it around a little bit. Gets the debris and the, the heavy materials and also the stem nematodes, they tend to settle to the bottom and it accumulates them in the center of the dish. And so I swirl it a little bit. It also tends to move the stems to the outside edge of the dish so it's easier to see down through the middle. Okay, let that settle and there's a small amount of debris right in the center of the dish. And the first thing I'll do is focus on that debris right on the bottom of the dish. And while I'm focused on that, then I can move the dish around. And you'll find the nematodes right on the bottom. So you just look in there and they're going to be translucent. And you will be able to see right through them, but um, usually they're wiggling around a lot. And so that really helps to find them. 
because they're just wiggling and wiggling in there and stirring up things around them. And sometimes you have to be patient. You have to take your time and look carefully and zoom in as close as you can to get the most powerful zoom you can on most dissecting microscopes. And I find it, you might adjust your lighting. Sometimes different settings will be easier to see them with. But get a systematic approach to moving your dish back and forth and carefully look to see if you see any stem nematode. So in addition to uh, the sanitation in our fields, once you know that you have alfalfa stem nematode, the two main things that you'll want to do is to rotate to a non-host crop for a couple of years to wheat or corn or something similar. And then next time you plant, plant a very resistant variety to alfalfa stem nematode. The alfalfa stem nematode can cause severe yield losses, as I mentioned, 7 to 12 percent. And one of the most damaging parts of the alfalfa stem nematode infestation is that it'll often shorten the life of the stand. It'll thin out the stand so that you maybe get a year or two less out of that planting of alfalfa. If you'd like to evaluate a sample from your alfalfa field, I'd suggest that you, if you don't have this type of equipment at home, which most people don't, just bring in a sample to your local extension office and most of the county agricultural agents will have a dissecting microscope similar to this and can help you with this analysis.